Were most people asked to imagine a wall of fire, they might think of the pyrotechnic scene on any first-rate metal band stage. But unfortunately, firewall protection services aren't quite as awe-inspiring as all that. That's not to imply, though, that they aren't terribly important, or that meltdowns caused by failing to ensure proper firewall protections can't be as damaging as the direct blast of a flamethrower. Firewalls adopt their name and function directly from physical structures that stand between danger, often fire, and fragile stuff, like your face. And computer firewalls actually do bear some similarity to their RL counterparts. They work to protect users and their information, not from thermal energy, but instead from the scum and villainy which occupy the wretched hives of the open internet. Generally speaking, there are two layers of firewall protection which operate in conjunction with both hard and software to carry out a given set of rules. Hardware firewall solutions are automatically built into the routers that most of us are using today. These work by tagging all outgoing traffic from a private network, like the one in our home, with a specific network ID that is then also attached to any corresponding incoming traffic. This allows the router to determine the origin of incoming packets, blocking any transfers which weren't initiated from behind the firewall. It also prevents files from being downloaded without a user's knowledge and stops first step intrusion known as port scan attacks, letting us feel safe that the update for our favorite new game is what it says and not some piece of spyware that will constantly spam us with adverts for pills that improve performance. I'm not sure where I got the idea I need those from. Software-based protections function by monitoring the integrity of flowing traffic processes through variables such as incoming and destination IP addresses, transfer times or download sizes, and killing connections that don't meet expectations. These are advantageous because they monitor outgoing traffic as well as incoming, blocking programs such as IP spoofing ones from attacking individual machines once they've infiltrated a network. These are what allow us to transfer files between our friends without worrying that a third party has attached something along the way, or feel safe when constantly transferring packets during things such as an online gaming session, knowing that any unapproved packets will be detected by the firewall. In fact, oftentimes the large-scale data thefts we hear about come as a result of some entity which has gone and painted a giant target on their back by not implementing strong enough active firewall protection, allowing unwanted information transfers to remain disguised as authentic ones. So while in theory firewall protections work as seamlessly as their physical predecessors, in practice these types of solutions can require a little bit more attention than your average wall made of brick. Pretty well anyone who has ever installed a new game or component has run into that annoying Windows prompt asking them if they're really sure they wish to connect and update the software which won't even be enough if your router doesn't automatically get configured in the process and they can be used for things like regional information censorship as well but while they're not all good news, no matter how arbitrary a warning message might seem or how annoying its accompanying beep is, these grievances are nothing compared to the sound your customers and partners will make when all of their credit cards and other information has been stolen. Why did they put a, that logo behind me? Speaking of logos, let's swap that out. Fractal Josh has decided to mercifully spare me this week. All I have to do this time is tell you guys about their sleek, clean Scandinavian design, their excellent cases, power supplies, and cooling products, and how you can check those out at fractal-design.com. That's all I have to say. But uh, actually, there's another thing I have to say that was a total lie. He's put me through a lot over the last 10 months and uh, apparently there's going to be a clip show or something like that so it's not actually really any less embarrassing if I don't have to do those things again if I'm showing them to you guys again but don't worry too much about that the point is Josh wants you to let Fractal Design know what you thought of this whole Humiliate Linus promotion on their Facebook page the should they bring these spots back what do you want to see from them in the future so that's pretty much it there's a link in the video description Thanks for watching this episode of Fast as Possible, guys. Like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you thought it stunk. Leave a comment under the video if you have suggestions for future episodes. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and follow and all that good stuff.